Hey guys, it's Melanie. Happy Wednesday. I hope your day is off to a good start. So today's video is a little bit of a two-parter. The first part, I'm going to let you guys in on how my gray hair journey is coming along because believe it or not, my hair has actually not fully transitioned yet and I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Um, but I'm also going to be sharing some product suggestions for my personal favorite leave-in products for my naturally gray hair. That being said, I think that the products that I'm going to be showing you guys today are really going to be perfect for any hair color, to be totally honest. Um, I, uh, I am a big believer in if you are going to let your hair grow out to its natural color, that you do everything you can to make sure that the hair is protected, especially when you're styling it. So today I'm gonna to be sharing some of my favorite leave-in products. Um, that are going to protect the hair while you're styling it and also um, just a couple of extras like a shine product that I think works really well on gray hair as well as kind of an overnight treatment that I've found that works really great on my gray hair as well. So whether you are a blonde, either natural blonde or bleach blonde or whether you're a brunette who's coloring her hair every four to six weeks to cover up the gray, no matter what your hair color is. I think that the product suggestions I'm gonna give you guys today are gonna to be great across the board, especially if you um, use heat to style your hair. The only heat that I honestly use on a daily basis is to blow dry my hair, and I didn't even do that today. So today you guys are getting a very natural makeup and hair look for me. Um, I wanted to show you what my hair looked like when I just put some leave-in into it and didn't blow dry my hair. So that's what you guys are seeing today. Um, so I like to do this typically on at least, I try to do it Saturday and Sunday where I just don't blow dry my hair on those days to give it a little bit of a break. But if we do have an activity or somewhere that we're going, I'll blow dry my hair on the weekends. Um, for the most part, I just stick to it during the week, however, and um, I find that blow drying my hair is helpful for me to get a more voluminous look to my hair. I am certainly a big fan of um, using mousse <laughs> and volumizing sprays in my hair. Um, being someone that has very fine and thin hair and having had that my entire life, I am envious of all the women with the gorgeous, like big, huge, massive manes of hair. <laughs> That's not something that I will ever experience in my life unless I go get a wig. Um, my hair, I will say, I got pretty lucky with the texture of my gray hair because it's the exact same texture of my formerly dishwater blonde hair. And that is, it's very fine, it's very thin and kind of silky. And in this light, especially, I feel like right here, you can tell that the dishwater blonde is still very much running through my gray hair. You can kind of see it right there. Um, so I would say that the bulk of my hair has now transitioned to gray. I do notice that each year that goes by that um, there more and more of the hair growing in is coming in gray instead of being that like 50-50 gray and dishwater blonde combo. By the way, if you want to know how I initially transitioned um, to gray hair, I, I have several videos about that. I do have a gray hair things playlist. I call it on my channel. Um, you can find it on my main page. Um, in that series, you see everything from product suggestions to help you care for your gray hair to how to transition if you're interested to what to do with your makeup or your eyebrows after you transition to gray because some of that stuff does have to change. So check out that playlist. There might be some things that you're interested in there that might help you. Um, 
But yeah, so my hair at this point, how long has it been since I've stopped coloring it? I wanna say I stopped coloring at, was it 34 or 35? I think it was probably 35 and I'm 42 now. So it's, this has been several years of me growing my hair out. Um, it's not a fast process. Um, I did initially have a stylist help me with just putting in some what we called gray highlights at the time. It was essentially bleaching my hair out in kind of a highlight pattern on the top so that as the gray was growing in, I wasn't tempted to try to make it blonde again, which is what I was doing for years, is trying to cover up those grays, right? Which is what most people tend to want to do with them. But I decided in my mid thirties that I was done coloring my hair. Um, it, it just wasn't something that I was gonna do anymore. It got to be really expensive. It was time consuming. Obviously, you know, there is waste that is created when you color your hair. And as frivolous as I am with a lot of my skincare, makeup, hair care, and stuff like that, I do try to be mindful of the fact that if there's anything that I can do that I can cut back on to potentially help the environment in some kind of way, um, I'm very like adamant about recycling and things like that. So all of my different containers, if they can be recycled after I'm done, I'm very conscious to do that. But, you know, coloring your hair does create waste, especially if you're doing it every three to four weeks, which is what I had to do because the amount of gray that was coming in was pretty substantial at the time. So I just finally got to a point where I was like, enough of this. I saw what the gray hair in my family looked like because my mom went gray very early. My Oma had beautiful white silver hair from the time that I can remember. I mean, I remember being very small in like the late 70s and early 80s and my Oma had white hair at the time and it just continued to get more white and beautiful and so I'm not afraid of the gray hair. I realize a lot of women are. If you're not ready for this step, definitely, you know, wait until you're ready. But here's the thing, those of you that are on the journey right now, um, keep going with it. If this is something that you want to do, push through. I know it's hard when you're transitioning, but just keep going with it and don't don't care what people think. I think that's my biggest piece of advice is you're going to have a lot of people that are going to tell you that you look older that um, it makes you look sickly, that it's just not pretty on you, gray hair isn't beautiful, um, you would look so much nicer if you just covered up those grays. You're gonna hear all sorts of stuff from people, ignore them. Um, there's this filter that I've just turned on and I mean, I've had like women in, <laughs> in grocery stores tell me like oh my gosh you don't color your hair like you would look so much younger if you colored your hair and I'm just like why would you say that to someone <laughs> why would you go out of your way to like insult someone when I'm clearly doing this on purpose right like this isn't some accident where I just all of a sudden woke up one day and was like oh my hair's gray <laughs> totally on purpose especially by the time that it gets to this length right so anyway, let me show you guys um, my transition here because I've got lots of different things going on in my hair. Um, so my temples really are the most white part of my hair. This grew in very quickly and instead of coming in as salt and pepper, it just immediately came in as like kind of a nice silvery white. Um, same on the other side. You can see that on the top here, there is still that mix of the dishwater blonde mixing in with the gray. But let me turn around and show you guys the back. I sit on an exercise ball, so uh, spare with me here. But, so I'm gonna lift my hair up and you guys can see that the back, like the underside here is still that, um, kind of dishwater blonde shade. It's like a very, very dark, dirty blonde. And that is, that's my natural hair color. Um, when I was younger, it was um, the same color as Stella's hair, which was like this really nice, pretty like honey blonde. <laughs> when I see Stella's hair, sometimes I'm like, oh, I kind of miss that blonde. But then I'm like, mm, no. 
I don't miss the maintenance of that because by the time that I got to my 20s, the, the pretty blonde had turned more of like that dark dishwater shade of blonde, which, you know, not ideal. So you can definitely see it like when I put my hair up, which I do a lot, you can see the blonde in the back. I don't really care. I don't, I've never gone to my hairdresser to have her like blended in. I'm just gonna let it transition and it is what it is, which has kind of always been my attitude about the gray hair growing in is, it is what it is, right? Like, um, this is what nature is intending for me right now and I'm just going with the flow. And I would really encourage you to do the same thing. Um, I'm always a huge proponent of telling people, like, just, if you wanna do it, do it. If you don't, don't. If you don't like the texture of your gray hair, then, uh, probably not going to love it once it all grows in. It might be a little bit more wiry. Some of that may have to do with maybe changing up products or maybe doing something like a Brazilian blowout may help smooth that out. I don't know. I obviously have this pencil straight fine thin hair, which is a nightmare for me because I can never have, you know, big gorgeous hair that like holds a curl or even a wave my hair will hold nothing <laughs> it immediately like i will use a curling iron it'll my hair still comes out straight out of a curling iron like that is how straight my hair is it just it won't do it but um you know if you're ready for it go for it don't let anyone tell you not to do it but if you're not ready for it because you don't like the texture of your hair or you just feel like it's gonna make you feel older then don't do it but don't let other people stop you from doing it like just because someone says to you oh that doesn't look pretty on you or i mean whatever they're gonna say please don't let that be a deterrent okay all right, you guys, let's get into the product suggestions here. Um, I have a bucket full, and these are all leave-in treatments that are fantastic for the following reasons. They are hydrating, they are detangling, um, moisturizing, which I guess could go with hydrating. They um, keep my hair from getting the, like that fly away, like you know how sometimes fine hair, like it can... I guess catch a lot of static in the air and get like those flyaways that just kind of like hang out in the air over here. <laughs> so this kind of takes away that staticky flyaway uh, stuff that can happen to a fine, thinner hair type. Um, these just leave my hair looking shiny. And most importantly, they all protect my hair from the heat very nicely. Now, I don't use high heat on my hair at all when I blow dry. I always just do the medium setting, but I do it on like the highest um, blowing option. I don't know how to word that. <laughs> Basically, I use like the most air with like the medium amount of heat. There we go. Um, so, uh, but these are fantastic when I, when I do it that way. Um, sometimes I will use the higher heat setting if I'm in a rush, but only for the first couple of minutes and then I switch it over to the medium heat. So if you're someone who just blasts your hair on high heat and doesn't move the blow dryer around, Think about doing that, disperse that heat a little bit. Don't just, don't fry your hair. All right, let's get going. I'll put links for all of these down below. So all of the things that I mentioned um, are going to be um, characteristics of every single one of these. If there's any like extra special things to mention, I will do that. Okay, first off, the Lanza Healing Moisture Moi Moi Moisturizing Mist. This um, has a moisture retain complex in it. So this one really is probably one of the most hydrating leave-ins. This is the one that I actually used today. So you can see it's not weighing my hair down at all. Um, this is all I have sprayed in my hair. By the way, I do take a um, hair vitamin, which has helped my hair grow significantly faster in the last eight, nine months. Um, I'll link what it is down below. Um, I swear by it. I will never be without it. It is the best hair supplement that I've ever taken. Um, anyway, this one here is fantastic. It also smells really good. I am going to talk about the smell of these products because that matters to me. I know for most people, they prefer for things to be unscented. 
um, or to have a very light scent. I like scent and products. It's important to me. Anyway, this one smells really good. It's more of a, I think it's like a little bit of a floral. Yeah, it's like a fresh floral, but it's pretty light. So not anything that's gonna stay in your hair, so. Um, next is the Gisu Heat Me, Treat Me, Complete Me. This is a propolis infused heat protecting spray. So this has propolis and honey in it. This was uh, something that I picked up at the last Sephora VIB sale that they were having last November. And um, I actually bought several things from this line and have really enjoyed them. I will say I don't love the smell of these products as much. But in terms of it protecting my hair and really making it feel soft and hydrated, this is a really good one. Um, any one of these I will repurchase like that. Um, several of them are actually, have been repurchased multiple times already. But this one is a great option. It's a newer brand to Sephora, so I thought I'd go ahead and mention it. Also, the Verb uh, Leave-In Mist. This is probably one of the like higher end, um, how do I say, like maybe more affordable options. I, I do, I don't mind blowing money on hair care. <laughs> um, so let me just say that up front. I am someone who will splurge on hair care. Um, there's not really any drugstore suggestions here, so I apologize for that. But one of the things that's really important to me is that a hair care brand um, and skincare and makeup and body care are cruelty free. So all of these are cruelty free options here. Um, so it does limit me a little bit, especially on the drugstore side. Um, but I've just also personally found that um, from my own experience that higher end hair care products give me better results. Um, I, think, I think there's a difference in the formulation. I know some people say there's not. <laughs> I notice a difference in the formulation and how the products work in my hair uh, from drugstore brands because I used to use those exclusively in the past to now using pretty much mostly higher end hair care. Anyway, this leave-in mist from um, Verb is fantastic. Again, it detangles, it strengthens, it adds shine, it repairs split ends, it smooths, it hydrates, helps with elasticity nourishes the hair prevents breakage all of like the good things and um again really lightweight doesn't weigh my hair down smells pretty good too all right here we have the better not younger no remorse heat protection and taming spray i would actually recommend this for those of you that have a thicker maybe more substantial hair type where you really need the spray to also help to tame your hair in, in some kind of way. This doesn't weigh my hair down, but I do notice on days where I prefer a more like slick look to my hair, you know, like when I part it down the middle and just kind of have it smooth like this, this is typically the spray that I will reach for because it gives me that really smooth look, but without leaving my hair greasy or weighed down. It just does the perfect job of, I don't wanna say coating because that implies bad when it comes to hair stuff in a way, but it just, it does. It provides this really nice coating to my hair that keeps it really smooth looking and sleek. I really like that. Okay, the Color Wow Dream Infused, uh, sorry, Dream Cocktail Kale Infused uh, Breakage Leave-In. Should be probably anti-breakage leave-in. Um, this reduces hair breakage by 50%. I do think that this one is probably one of the most strengthening leave-ins that I can use on my hair. Oftentimes, I will take a few pumps of this and put it on like kind of the mid shaft to ends. And then on the top of my hair, I will use maybe the sprays because this comes out in like a like cream format almost. So this is great for my ends. I can use it like throughout all of my hair, but sometimes I do like to mix several options together. And this is one that is great for the ends, especially if you want to do maybe a lighter spray for near your roots. 
An oldie but a goodie that I still love to this day is the Caviar Anti-Aging Replenishing CC Cream. This is a 10 in one complete correction leave-in. So they say with this you're getting UV protection, softness, smoothness, shine, moisture, manageability, strength, anti-breakage, heat protection, and some light hold. You guys, this is a rock star product. I have repurchased this multiple times. Um, in fact, I wanna put this one in the bathroom is I think I'm gonna be finished with this one in a few days. So this is the one that's gonna pop into the bathroom. I'm trying to be careful about not putting too many things in the bathroom because then I have like selection overload. But this one here, hands down for years, I think ever since it was released, I've been loyal to this product from uh, um, Alterna. It smells really good. <laughs> but it really does a good job of protecting my hair. And I think out of all of these, this one and then this next one, I have repurchased the most often and most frequently, and that I think I'm the most loyal to. Um, the Purology uh, 21 Essential Benefits Color Fanatic Multitasking Leave-In Spray. This is fabulous, you guys. Um, again, one of my favorites, really lightweight, but this protects my hair like no other. And this is actually one of the few Purology products that I really like the smell of the product of. Um, the Purology Hydrate Shampoo and Conditioner is one of my favorites. Um, it's been a go-to for a number of years, but I actually can't stand the smell of it, but I love the way it makes my hair feel. This, I love the way it makes my hair feel and look, and it also, um, Smells really good, so that's a bonus. Couple more um, Alterna products here. Um, this one is um, when I feel like my hair needs a little bit more strength to it. I will use the Caviar Anti-Breakage Restructuring Bond Repair Leave-In Heat Protection Spray. This strengthens and protects the damaged hair and it actually protects the hair up to 450 degrees Celsius. Um, this one I cannot spray directly into my hair because it's more of like a stream. Um, so I pump this into the palm of my hand and use it mostly on kind of the mid shaft to ends again and then I will use a slightly lighter option, maybe something like this on my roots. I can use this throughout, but it really honestly for me works best on the ends. It's a little too heavy if I get it too close to my roots, but this really does strengthen um, the lower part of my hair and makes it look so shiny and healthy afterwards. And then an overnight option, an overnight treatment that I like to use that's also from Caviar, um, their anti-aging line from Alterna is the Restructuring Bond Repair Leave-In Overnight Serum. So I will just put a little bit of this into, again, shaft to the ends, and then I do, because um, my hair is long enough now, I will put it in a braid, and then in the morning I will wash my hair, and oh man, when I wake up and I take my hair out of those braids, it is so soft and silky. I mean, it just feels like a million bucks. In fact, I think I want to do this treatment tonight, so set that off to the side. And then the very last thing that I wanted to share is obviously gray hair has trouble getting shiny. Um, so this Kenra Platinum Silkening Mist, this is a, they call it a brilliant shine spray. This is fabulous, you guys. You don't want to use too much if you have fine, thin hair like I do, but this might actually tame your grays. Um, it does come in a like oil or like in a pump type product as well. I would say if you have thicker or coarser hair, I'll link that down below for you. But if you have fine, thin hair like me, this mist is really nice because you can just lightly mist it into the hair. Not only does it smell borderline addicting, <laughs> but it really brings out the shine in my gray and makes it look so, so pretty. Also, if you deal with like new growth and flyaways, which I tend to get right about here, I'm getting a lot of new growth around my hairline, which is fantastic. It's a little frustrating because I always have hairs that go pink, 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 you know, like all over the place, but this helps to tame them down if I really don't feel like looking at them. So you guys, these are my suggestions for really great leave-in protection type products that are gonna be great for not only gray hair like this, but also if you color your hair, you're gonna need a good heat protectant anyway. So I think all of these would be really great options for you. So 
Anyway, thank you guys so much for taking the time to join today. If you're new, I hope you'll take the time to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Toodles.